hey, I'm actually filming during the day because I actually have time today. So I'm coming back with another review. And today I'm reviewing. Oh, you can't see it. Today I'm reviewing the story of the human body, evolution, health, and disease. This is by Daniel E. Lieberman. This was published in October 2013 by Pantheon. This book has 480 pages, but a lot of it's a biography and the index and notes, and it has 193 ratings in Goodreads. So as you can tell, this is probably a nonfiction. This is by a professor of biological sciences at Harvard. And essentially what he goes through is the defining qualities of the human body and how those how these attributes evolved, why they evolved, the pros and cons, and how changes in the environment and changes in ourselves really spark these changes. And how the how we have evolved is kind of clashing with our current ever evolving culture. He goes through, you know, when we became bipedal primarily because there are many animals that can walk on two legs, but uh, humans are bipedal like all the time and that is very significant and it goes through like the structure of the human skeleton, how it had to shift and compares different human ancestors and how things have slowly been changing and when a pivotal change had occurred and how certain changes in our bodies have sparked changes in our brains and how the structure in our faces and our skulls are advantageous for certain types of behavior, certain types of food to uh, develop language better. Then it goes more into how agriculture has kind of changed our relationship with the environment, like how essentially our health has been altered by the advent of agriculture switch from a uh, hunter-gatherer society to forming larger groups and staying in settlement year-round. One thing that this book definitely touches on is just the human body cannot evolve fast enough as our culture evolves and a lot of things in our culture um, like he terms it as disevolution where there are a lot of things that are you know statistically bad for us but we keep passing that down in our culture and that is like disevolution. Like we have foods that produce a plaque on our teeth so that we need to brush our teeth, or that we produce candy, we produce like things like soda. We crave that stuff, we like that stuff, but it's ultimately not good for us, but, but we keep passing down these things that are ultimately not good for us. And then also he talks about how culture also works as a buffer between evolution because a lot of times humans have not adapted certain traits to prevent certain ailments because we already kind of have a stopgap in our culture where some cultures where they just made something to make up for that deficiency that they had in their bodies. And then it also covers why, you know, many cultures that were hunter-gathered before but now they're becoming westernized, why suddenly, you know, obesity and type 2 diabetes is running rampant in those places. And of course, he definitely talks about our diet, our modern, like despite the fact that we are healthier now and that we're more comfortable, there are certain things that um, we have culturally and environmentally set ourselves up to have particular diseases and chronic ailments that don't and have, haven't really occurred that much in um, hunter-gatherer societies, even accounting for the fact that we live longer. Even if you look at um, people who are from hunter-gatherer societies have lived as long as we do, they still don't have certain ailments that we do. So things like heart attacks, they don't really have heart attacks, same thing with cancer, diabetes, like so the argument that you know, oh, the reason why they don't have as many diseases as we do is because they didn't live as long, but there are, you know, a lot of times for hunter-gatherers, if they live past childhood, they can live to be pretty old. They can live to be great-grandparents if, you know, it's the opportunity. So um, there are a lot of things with our diet, how our foods process, how we, you know, prioritize sleep, how we work, how active we are, how we clothe ourselves how we read, how we spend our leisure time, and that all kind of contributes to kind of modern ailments that weren't didn't really exist in the past, except for maybe, you know, very indulgent aristocratic people, which were incredibly small percentage of people in the past. It covers a lot of stuff, 
I did like this a lot. It was very informative and definitely if you are thinking about or dabbling in the paleo diet, this is definitely something to read to kind of maybe hone your paleo ness a bit better. So this professor is also known as the barefoot professor since he also does a lot of stuff saying that humans are meant to be barefoot so he runs barefoot and he does a lot of studies of how being barefoot is more beneficial than wearing shoes despite the fact that shoes are more comfortable. One thing about this book it definitely doesn't hold back the vocabulary. He does not use layman terms very often. He just uses the real world. He's a doctor so when he's talking about the science and the medical aspects, he does not use layman terms. Sometimes it seems a bit repetitive, but the things that the reason that he's repetitive and keeps repeating certain things is because, you know, if something was developed, it's not there isn't just one cause, so he has to keep reiterating the setup for this one thing and also the results of certain things that have developed in our bodies or in our environment have had many different results. So he has to keep reminding you of all these, the setup of all these different things. So yeah, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really did like it. Um, I definitely know people who would definitely appreciate this. I mean, if someone, yeah, definitely is really into the paleo diet, definitely recommend it. If you are not wary of, you know, medical jargon, go for it. Um, it has a lot of evolutionary biology and, um, yeah, it's mostly biology based. It's not it doesn't stick to one culture too much. It doesn't it is a lot of the facts aren't necessarily too uh culture specific. Um and it doesn't necessarily talk about psychology that much. So it's just mostly like biology and just the mechanics of the human body and just our inter interaction with our new modern environment that we have created for ourselves. But he does admit, he does like point out like there are differences between like developed countries and underdeveloped countries or at least the lower classes of underdeveloped countries and how it's different. So, so hope you guys enjoy that. Bye!